I'm Jo Stone and I'm in the country as an actor. I play Corinne and also one of the founding members of Stone Castro with Paolo Castro. I trained as an actor um, here at Flinders. I graduated and I ended up doing a TV series for a year, got some money, went to Germany and got into doing theatre in Germany and was really lucky. I ended up working with Cedar La Bee for three years. Paolo and I met in Portugal. I was working with a Portuguese director called Vera Mantero and she invited me to do a, a work and Paolo was in it. We spent four months in this incredible residency. We'd go and see anthropologists, we'd drink bottles of red wine till three in the morning and then we'd just improvise all day and night, I guess. It was quite a crazy process, really interesting. And we met there, but Paul didn't speak in English and I didn't speak any Portuguese. But we got to know each other's work through just watching improvisation. She'd make us improvise for an hour at a time. So I got to observe his work and I really enjoyed his humour and his intensity, but I couldn't understand anything. I'm Paul Castro. Um, I'm director in Stone Castro. Me and Joe, we divide um, a kind of direction artistic together uh, and I'm directing this show the country when I was a um, young teenager I was fascinated with films and uh, one time I remember I went to saw um, the film King Kong and I resolved to be a director I want to be a director after see King Kong with my brother and I went to the Centre Cultural in Vila Real is the capital of mountains in Portugal and said, uh, I want to direct here, not King Kong, but uh, uh, Julius Caesars. <laughs> and uh, they asked, do you have cast? And I said, yes, my three sisters and uh, a neighbor. And uh, they didn't want to perform my show. <laughs> and I forced them to perform. Uh, <laughs> and it was a huge success. I started as in an acting background and Paolo was predominantly from a film background, our work now is quite dramaturgically based and very script driven and we allowed a lot of different mediums to kind of come through. We were really interested in the high visual content and body language and movement as a tool I suppose to get sort of a subtext or different layering of the, the script and, and text. I love the immediacy of theatre. Um, I also love film, but for very different reasons. But theatre, I think, is a bit more dangerous in that, you know, it, once it's started, it's like a flight. You take off and it, it, it works or it doesn't. Crimp's a very beautiful writer and he, this work in particular, he has two works that sort of lie, on, lie side by side and it's the country and the city. And um, not so many people have done the country that I'm aware of. Um, I've seen the city twice, um, very beautiful work. It's sort of intense and maze-like. And this, the country is sort of the flip side of it in that there's, it's very similar, but there's a lot of space and there's sort of a lot of unsaid and the unsaid creates the space, I suppose. People sort of idealise, I suppose, space and Australia and, and even though the country wasn't written and set in Australia, I think it's very pertinent to Australian audiences in that it's about a couple who, who want to overcome problems that they have by escaping to the country. Martin Kurim and the country mark one thing for me. His text is, is not explain exactly what is happening and he gives space for the audience do that imagination and for, for uh, the creatives do the imagination. For me it's more important the dramaturgy than the text. I work a lot what is behind the text and it's incredible. Martin Krimp make disappear characters and not explain why they disappear. It's like being a David Lynch movie where you, you are not understand very well, but you are connected with something. And that story is incredible of the country because you stay very connected. The collaboration with, with David Lampard and Daniel Barber, they've worked a lot together before. So this is our first time working with them, but they sort of come as a team and they're incredible so far. They have just inundated us with lots of ideas and emails and so it's been really good dialogue. 
And because they work at the State Opera, we've found a collaboration with the State Opera and they've been really supportive of our production. So we'll be performing it in a State Opera studio. Dave Sefton too has been wonderful. It's such an honour for us to be a part of his, his programming. I think it's really lovely to be a part of that program when you turn the pages and see such incredible companies and artists coming to Adelaide. So yeah, it's wonderful to be a part of it.